This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Honor 6X by Huawei. The Honor line is their affordable, it's supposed to be for the young, hip kind of folks brand, so that's why we just don't say Huawei Honor 6X, Honor by Huawei. Anyway, it's an affordable phone, $249 for this Android phone. And you know what? There's a lot of competition in this segment. We'll talk about that. But it's got a couple of neat tricks on it, like the dual camera setup on the back, which for a phone in this price range, you just don't usually see anything beyond your basic snapper. It has a high-resolution front camera, too. It's 8 megapixels, a 1080p IPS display on board, and 4G LTE, of course. It's a GSM unlocked phone. So if you're using Sprint and Verizon, not the phone for you. Nope. Not at all. But if you're on AT&T, T-Mobile, any of their offshoot kind of carriers, then it's going to work, and obviously overseas and places where GSM works. We're going to look at it now. So what is the Honor 6X? It's an unlocked GSM Android smartphone with a 5.5-inch 1920 by 1080 IPS display, full HD display. That's nice. Budget phones used to have lower resolutions. Not anymore. And 5.5-inch is pretty popular these days. It's on the large size, obviously, but phone fits in my hand. I do have long fingers and fairly large hands. It has 2D glass here, so which means there's a little bit of a curve. It gives it a little bit of a classy look, and it's a composite metal design, which means that this back plate right here is metal. These antenna caps are plastic and this area over here is plastic. Overall, you know, it's not bad looking for the price. It's not going to win any design rewards, but it's fine. You can get this in silver, in gray, or in gold. Fingerprint scanners on the back here works really well. Huawei always does a good job with the fingerprint scanners. And obviously we have our buttons over here and doesn't rattle, nothing like that. I'm shaking it to see if it goes rattle, rattle, rattle. It doesn't, yep, they, they work fine. Headphone jacks up top, and we have micro USB, the 2.0 style here, not USB-C, connector on the bottom. And that seems a little bit retro these days, doesn't it? Speaker fires from the bottom. The other set of holes is for the microphone. And like all these phones, if you hold it like this, if you're watching a movie or gaming, it's easy to block the sound. Sound on this gets pretty loud when you go above 50%. And you can go all the way up to like 90% and it won't distort, which is, well, pretty decent. Right over here is your SIM card tray and also micro SD card. So it can either have two nano SIM cards or one nano SIM card and a micro SD card because the second carrier holds the well, both the micro SD and potentially your second SIM card. For the micro SD card, Huawei says it supports a maximum of 128 gig card. The display is quite bright, by the way, and there's really not much brightness or color shifting going on. It's a pretty good quality IPS display for a phone in this price range. Obviously, we have on-screen buttons going over here, and we have Huawei's heavy-handed UI. Now, it's never slowed down the phone so much, but it's just kind of, I don't know. It's one of those UIs where you have all of your applications on the home screen. There's no app drawer going on, which isn't, well, my preferred way of doing things. You can create folders. I created that benchmark folder. Everything you see here was pre-installed other than Asphalt 8 and that benchmarks folder. So there's a bit of bloatware on here. I mean, these things right here, for example. And believe me, they're annoying because what they do is they tie into notifications, the CNN and the News Republic, whether you want to hear about news and politics or not. And you probably don't at this point. I know I'm getting pretty tired of it. You're going to. So you got your notifications over here. And this is a slight improvement over the way they used to do things. And you got your quick settings over here. And full settings are here. So this is pretty standard looking stuff here in the UI. This isn't too bad. And there's a lot of very customizable things in here. For example, when we take a look at the display, not just the usual wallpaper mode and all that sort of thing. You've got the blue light filter mode here. You've got brightness, which would be normal on any phone. Color temperature, so you can manually tweak the colors to suit yourself, which is nice. Right, and there's also a couple of presets for cold, warm, and in the middle. And increased readability under sunlight lets it run at maximum brightness if you're using it in a very bright place. And 450 nits is the maximum brightness there. Huawei includes a couple of their tools, just things, handy things. The weather app is actually pretty decent on this, a flashlight, a notepad, FM radio. Yeah, I know some of you really like that. The usual SIM toolkit and management backup application and turning it into a mirror so you can check and see if you've got some seed stuck between your teeth. Now, one thing that is pretty nice about this is it's shipped originally with Android 6.0 Marshmallow and Motion UI, E-M-U-I. 4.0. We have already gotten the over the upgrade to, look at that, Android 7.0 Nougat. Usually these budget phones are a version behind, and Huawei is pretty proud of the fact that they actually made a major update available for a cheap phone. Usually these cheap phones are made and then kind of forgotten by the manufacturer. 
Huawei continues to use their own Kirin CPUs, and those are very good CPUs, so no complaints there. This obviously is going to be a low to mid-rangey CPU at this price, so it's a 2.1 gigahertz Kirin 655 octa-core processor, three, three gigs of RAM inside, so that's it's between the, the Moto G5 Plus two models. There's a two gig and there's a four gig model. This one's right in between. And scores on this are not going to beat a Samsung Galaxy S8 by any means. You're looking at about a third of the scores, but it's 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 passable stuff right there. And there's on two two. And some of our graphics benchmarks, so you get the idea of the performance. And playing games, you'll see it, it, it actually can handle pretty demanding games decently well. There'll be some frame drops occasionally and that sort of thing, but it's adequate. So performance on this is pretty decent. This is Asphalt 8. That's a pretty demanding game. I saw a couple of frame drops along the way, but not bad really, considering the price class of this phone and the CPU that's inside is pretty darn competent for, well, gaming, which is nice. The phone has a front notification LED. I know some of you really love that. Uh, cons with this is there's no NFC, so no Android Pay or anything like that. Single band Wi-Fi instead of the usual these days dual band. Now even cheaper phones often have dual band Wi-Fi. It used to be in the old days they didn't, so that's kind of a bummer. So if it, you'll, you know what that is if you use it. So you, you can get faster speeds generally with dual band Wi-Fi. Bloatware you saw, and well, that Emotion UI, and I'm not a huge fan of it, but it, it is getting lighter and lighter with each iteration, so there's that. So, on the back we have a dual lens setup, that, with a flash, obviously. It's pretty unusual to see a dual lens camera setup on a phone at this price, it's nice. 12 megapixel main camera, the 2 megapixel auxiliary camera isn't there to do super wide angle, like an LG G6 or something, it's there to handle bokeh effects, or focus effects. It's only two megapixel, you don't use it alone. And if you want to get to that, you can do that right here. And you can see wide aperture enabled. And this tells you a virtual F4. Now you're really not letting more light in. For those of you who know about photography and know that F4 is going to let in more light than F5.6, for example. And if we go over here, it's really the amount of background blur effect that you're going for. That's all that it's going to change. So it's, it's software interpolation based on what the two different camera lenses see. And it works okay. Well, you'll show you some sample photos so you can see for yourself. It looks a bit artificial, certainly the amount of blurring, but it's better than nothing, and I'm not going to complain at this price range. You've got beauty shot mode over there as well. It's have to focus, obviously, and the usual these days slide in from either side to get to your settings. So you've got all sorts of stuff. Pro Photo lets you manually set things. You can turn on HDR, which does help in challenging light settings. And if we swipe this way, more settings. This can record 1080p video, it cannot record 4K video, but you've got a timer, smile capturing, it can attempt to track things when you're shooting video, so and then you got your quick access to pictures right here. Now this guitar picture, well, it's it's not bad actually, it was pretty low light, but my goodness, it makes it look shiny like a piece of glass, and that guitar does not have that high gloss of finish on, and that speaks to the fact that it's probably pretty cheap plastic cover over the lens there, and it's just catching reflections and bouncing them back. And for our Foca bokeh effects, here is our little clay soldier friend. And this is the normal one, so everything is pretty much in focus here, and then we'll get to the Foca version. So see how it's ex exceedingly blurred things out. It brought it down to a virtual f1.4. So it looks kind of neat. It's better than not having that feature at all. I have no complaints at this price range. Honestly, I'm not going to expect it to work like the iPhone 7 Plus in terms of effective background blur. The phone has a pretty large battery, especially given the fact that it has that mid-rangey CPU and a 1080p display, nothing, not something higher resolution and more power hungry. 3340 milliamps sealed inside. Obviously, this is not a phone that you can open up. Now, Huawei claims two days of use on a charge, and you'd have to be a very light user to make it two days, but it is a solid one-day phone, say averaging five to five and a half hours of actual screen on time. With moderate use, I made it to the end of the day with about 15% left, and I I like to play a lot of YouTube videos. I do email on the phone, the usual notifications, that sort of stuff. Charges via micro USB 2.0 charging cable, and it's your standard 5 volt 2 amp charger that we've seen forever with Android smartphones. Again, not USB C, nothing like that going on, but they do claim quick charging, and it is fairly quick to charge. I wouldn't say it's as fast as Qualcomm quick charge, but it's pretty decent. So that's the 
Honor 6X by Huawei, their latest affordable phone, again, 250 bucks, and for the price, it's not bad. There is competition. We have the Moto G5 Plus, for example, on board, ZTE and their Axon phones, a lot to choose from. Now, overseas, particularly in Europe and obviously in China, Huawei is a very popular brand. They've been having trouble getting traction here in the United States. So in the U.S., I think more people are more familiar with the Moto brand. Maybe this won't do as well in the United States, but I'm sure globally it actually will because it's a pretty nice phone for the price. It's pretty amazing really what you can get these days for 250 bucks. No contract, no payments, no nothing, just that. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this video.